Hi everyone. <laughs> I am sorry I am late. I had some technical problems. So I'm here now though. I'm here now. If you're joining me live, welcome. This is Nicole Steele. I'm the owner of The Joyful Stamper. And I go live every Thursday at 11 a.m. And you can always watch the replay. I post this on my blog and on my YouTube channel. So I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And I love sharing all the creations I make. So I just thank you for joining me today. And today we are going to make two easy treat holders, um, which are good for Halloween, for Christmas. If you want some table settings or little favors at your Thanksgiving table, you can go ahead and these would be perfect for it. So let's jump in with the Stampin' Up! news first and then we'll get on to the stamping. So this month in October, I am giving away, um, I'm having a drawing for a free one month paper pumpkin kit. I will uh, purchase a prepaid code and you can enter, you get entered whenever you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin this month with me. So in the month of October, if you are a new to me subscriber to Paper Pumpkin and you sign up this month, I will enter you into a drawing to win that one month prepaid code to Paper Pumpkin and I'll draw it on November 3rd. So the November kit looks really cute guys. Jolly Gingerbread. I think it looks so cute and I love these colors. I put a little craft, uh, color graphic up on my Facebook page and on my blog and they just look adorable and look at that box. So if you want to be entered in that, go ahead and subscribe with me and you might, I don't know, you might win it. Who knows? Then the designer series paper sale is still going on 15% off select packs and anyone that orders from this sale with me in my store, I'll send you a four pack of handmade holiday cards. I love to make Christmas cards. I've got tons of them and I'd be happy to send you some. So go check that out because actually I have about half of the packs that are on sale. So they are super cute and pretty. And my reward code. This is my way of thanking you for shopping with me. You earn Joyful Stamper reward points that you can put towards a $50 shopping spree. So if you shop in my store at all in October, and that my store can be found at shopwithnicole.stampinup.net. Just make sure if your order's under $150, you put in that code so you can start earning points. My blog has the tracking sheet that you can use. And there's a little tab that says rewards and just go to that. You can download the sheet and you can read the details about my rewards program. But it's just my way of saying thank you for shopping with me because I know you have a lot of choices. <laughs> I appreciate you choosing me. So let's get started. My first project. I saw this from um, Erica Serwin of Pink Buckaroo Designs. She made this Reese's Cup holder. Reese's Cups are my favorite and I actually had ha just happened to buy a whole box of them for trick-or-treating and a couple days later I stumbled across her project and thought this would be perfect. I love decorating my treats that I pass out to my um, the people that come, the kids that come to my door. So this is super cute. I'm going to show you how to make this. So let's get started. And we're going to use the Hallow's Night Magic Bundle. And we have a little bit of scoring to do. So I'm going to bring out my scoreboard. And this is a piece of Cajun Craze cardstock. I have a project sheet that has all the measurements listed on it. So you don't have to worry about writing this down right now. This is a six and a quarter inch piece by six and three quarters of an inch. So it's not quite a perfect square. And we have the long side, the six and three quarter inch side um, against the top of the scoreboard. And we are gonna score at half an inch. And we're gonna score at one and an eighth of an inch. I always have to double check when I'm dealing with eighths of an inch just to be careful. And then six and an eighth. Okay, so half an inch, one and an eighth of an inch, and six and an eighth of an inch on the long side. We're going to turn it, so now the six and a quarter inch side is against the top there. And we are going to score that short side at two and a quarter of an inch, two and seven eighths of an inch, five and an eighth of an inch, and five and three quarters of an inch. So now we have our box made and we're going to do some trimming. 
Now what I did ahead of time is I made my, I always make myself a template and I mark where I want the adhesive to go and what the tabs and everything should look like so that I have something to follow when I cut the um, extra pieces. So I'm going to be laying this aside. I'm going to follow this as I am going ahead to cutting this. So these double flaps at the top, you can see there's two squares at the top, one at the bottom. These are going to be the closure. This is going to be the bottom of the box. And we have some squares that we want to cut away um, and some tabs we need to trim. So we're going to cut this little square down here off. We don't need that. And then I'm going to cut on these score lines. And then I am going to angle those cuts so that when the tabs get tucked into the box, they won't be visible. And now I'm going to turn it this way so that the top of the box is now facing me or at the bottom with me. And what I'm going to do is cut away these sections right here. We don't need those. And I'm also going to cut away these two little squares here. Now I will be making a bunch of these. All right, and the next thing I'm going to cut away is I'm going to cut away these sections. I'm going to be making a bunch of these, so when all said and done, I'll probably have about 20 of these. And now I'm going to go ahead and angle these tabs. I just, I don't know, the kids seem to have fun coming to choose something, and I've got them all decorated differently. Of course, we don't have a big neighborhood. We have maybe, I don't know, 20 kids that come trick-or-treat, so... It is a joy to do all of this. Some years I've, um, I used the mini treat bags, which was a die we had a couple years ago. And I used those to make, I filled them with all kinds of candy. That was super fun using the designer series paper for that. And we're gonna angle this one too. Okay, so we've got that all taken care of. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to fold on the score lines. This is where a bone folder comes in handy. So that you can make sure that your your fold lines are nice and flat it'll help your box stay together even the Reese cups are my favorite I unbelievably will not be eating them because I'm gonna make these right away. Once I make these packaging, or once I make the packaging for them, um, I'm much less likely to uh, eat them. Do you guys do that? Buy your Halloween candy too early, and then you have to go buy more? Okay, so what I'm going to do is apply adhesive, and the way this box is gonna come together is see this outside flap? It's gonna fold in, and we're gonna fold this over to, um, ah, what's going on here? this way. There we go. We're gonna, this is the outside flap. It's gonna fold in and then this box is gonna fold over. So we wanna apply adhesive right there. And I'm gonna use tear and tape for this. You could also use stamp and seal plus. Both of them are very strong adhesives and that's what you want for this project so that it holds together. Okay, so that's gonna get folded over like that. I'm not gonna take that apart yet though because I am, um, need to put adhesive on the bottom. This is gonna be the bottom of our box. So you're gonna have this glued together. It's gonna to go like this, and this is gonna fold in like that, okay? Now here's a tip for you. See where these folds all meet? I want that to be the back of the box because it just, it'll be look nice, have nice clean edges on the front. So when I glue together the bottom of my box, I wanna make sure that that rougher edge goes to the back the same place that this one is okay so I'm gonna put some adhesive right there and feel free to go ahead of time and actually write on the tab the word adhesive I did that on my template here too and it helps me remember where I'm going to be putting the sticky um, the tear and tape okay so now we can go ahead and assemble this we're gonna peel off the liner tape 
let me get my piercer tool. That helps in removing this liner paper. Okay, and now I'm gonna fold that over and just line this up just like that. It's a nice, easy way to make sure your edges line up. Take the liner tape off this. Now we're gonna fold the box. I'm gonna tuck those tabs in. Tuck down the tab that has the tear and tape on it and then fold that one in. Okay, so now we've got the box. This is the lid. I just love this project. Erica Sorin's very good at making treat holders and 3D projects and she's the queen of all that. So <laughs> it's nice to get inspiration from her for sure. Now I'm going to take this piece of designer series paper. It's four and seven eighths of an inch by two and one eighth. And it's from the Magic in This Night pack. And that is part of the designer series paper sale this month. So it's 15% off. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue this to the front of my box. I've had so much fun with this paper. I love making crafts for Halloween. And I've almost used up this whole entire pack. Okay, so we've got that. Now we're gonna do some stamping and die cutting. So we've got gray granite and we've got a piece of Cajun craze and we are going to pull out, um, where is it? A Cajun craze ink pad and memento tuxedo black using both of those. And we're going to ink up this label stamp. Let me show you the stamps that I'm using. It's Hallow's Night Magic and I'm going to use this image right here which can be die cut with one of the label stamps from the coordinating die set and I'm going to use this large spider and I'm going to stamp trick or treat. Now with these larger stamps I find it easier to flip the block upside down and tap the ink pad to the stamp image. Okay and now I'm going to stamp it on this piece of gray granite cardstock. Okay and we want the spider now on Cajun Craze. This is the large spider. There's a little baby spider in there too that's pretty cute. Okay. And the trick or treat I am going to stamp with Cajun Craze ink. This is a half inch wide strip of cardstock. And you probably have a lot of scraps in that size. So I just grabbed any length. It's a half inch wide but it's just a length that I happen to have in my scrap bag. And I'll trim it down as I need to once I stamp it or get my project assembled. Okay, we're going to color these with Stampin' Blends. I'm using dark basic black, dark um, smoky slate, and dark pretty peacock. I'm going to do the leaves in pretty peacock. And I like to use the bullet point for this just because I feel like I have more control with the color. This is alcohol ink. So what happens is the color can wick outside of your image if you're not careful. So you don't want to color all the way to the lines. You can almost just touch your tip to the cardstock and the color will just flow right out of the marker onto the paper. There is a brush tip end to these, but since this is, since this is such a small area, I'm not going to use it. Okay, I got all the leaves. And now I am going to use Dark Smoky Slate to color these roses. Oh, actually, I saw, I see a couple leaves I missed. Pull that back out. Do you guys like mass producing stuff? I know some people do not like it. I don't mind it, especially when it's a project I really, really like. And I like this one. So when I'm done doing this live, I'm going to go ahead and make a bunch of these. All right. So again, this is Dark Smoky Slate, and I'm coloring the flowers on this label with them. You could go ahead and use the dark and light images or dark and light colors of this of the Stampin' Blends, but I didn't want to fuss with it because it's such a small area. And I see another leaf over here. Okay, that looks good to me. And now we're gonna do some die cutting. 
with brand stamping cutting and boss. And we need the plates. Okay, so we have base plate one, plate two, plate three, and now we can lay our images down. And I'm going to grab the large spider and I'm going to grab the smaller of the two labels. And the label's gonna frame this image right here. Can get it to stay. And I'm gonna put the spider down. Now there is a, we have a magnetic plate that you can use, or you can tape your images down, your dies down too, so that they don't move. And I'm gonna run this through. Let me get the plate secured. Okay. Up here, that crack. That means it's cutting. Yes, if you ever hear that crack, you don't need to think that something's wrong with your machine. There's not, it's just doing its job doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so we've got a label and we've got the spider. Clear out of the way. Hi, Sharon. How are you? Okay. Got this all put together. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue this all together. So I'm going to tear the edges of this sentiment strip here and I'm going to bring back out my memento pad and I'm going to use it to brush the edges of this I'm going to do that to this box too I'm just running along all those edges front and back And I know you might be going, oh, you know what? Those trick-or-treaters are not even going to notice all of this. I know. <laughs> the parents do, though. And I have so much fun doing this. It doesn't matter to me. And actually, there some of the older kids do notice. Make sure I got it all. Besides, there's a full-size candy bar inside. How could you not like this? All right. Now I'm going to... Um, glue these pieces down. This I'm using just liquid glue for this. Because this is going to be going in a trick-or-treat bag, I don't really need a ton of dimension here. Okay. Now this piece, I am going to kind of crumple it up. And I will use dimensions, dimensionals for this and for the spider. Just pull them out of my adhesive drawer here. Oh, I think that spider needs a mini. The black stamp and dimensionals would be perfect for this. Absolutely perfect. But I don't have any. So I'm using what I've got. Okay, and we're going to lay this right there. And I'm going to put the spider right there. And now I'm going to come in with my dark basic black. Um, stamp and blends and this time I am going to use the brush tip because what I'm going to do is flick some color onto this project so you take your cap take the brush tip and just flick it down like that Ooh, don't you love that I love the way that finishes off a project okay now I'm going rogue here I'm using some retired stamp in that product I love this twine I don't even I think it was five years ago we had this and I'm gonna double it up and um, so I'm taking the piece and folding it in half because I'm going to try a double bow on this but here's the thing if what I do every week is if you place a $35 order in my store by midnight of the Sunday following each live I send out the project kits for that week's live class and that means you'll get this twine in your project kit too so no worries you will have this to complete the projects so all you have to do is go to my store, shop with nicole.stampinup.net, type in that host code, place a $35 order, and then I'll get notified. And Monday morning, I will cut all the project kits, package them up, and mail it out to you. And then you can re-watch this live to put it together once it arrives at your house. 
I really enjoy packing all that stuff up. <laughs> Don't forget the candy bar. That's the most important part, isn't it, Sharon? <laughs> the candy bar. And I'm going to use a mini glue dot to stick this twine on. Oh, I need to press a little bit harder. Or what you can do is take out your piercer or your take your pick tool. That's the newer version of it. And where do I want to put it? I want to put it right below the spider. Whoop. There we go. And the candy. Slide that in. It fits really nice. Oh my gosh, I just thought Erica just had a great idea with this. So there's that first project, easy treat holder. And how easy would it be to make this for Christmas, right? Or use the Gilded Autumn paper to make it for Thanksgiving. You can put some fancier chocolates in there. So really, really versatile. Doesn't have to be Halloween. I just personally love Halloween. So that's where my mind was when I was making this. So, okay, let me go ahead with project number two. Now, project number two is something you could make for Christmas. And I can't seem to find my sample here. It's probably buried under something. Yes, it is. Okay. So whenever I create kits, I like to send a thank you just to the people that ordered the kit because I like to surprise and delight and it's fun. So I have a lollipop holder here that I used, that I made, and I am using those same Halloween magic dies. I'm going to use these two labels, the smaller one and the larger one, but I'm using them with Christmas paper to create this lollipop holder. So let me pull out the stuff for that. I'm also going to be using gold cord, which is from the, was it, Wonder of the Season ribbon combo pack. I have a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock, and I already went ahead and die cut this. And I also have this piece. It's from the Tis the Season 6x6 inch designer series paper pack. So not only is magic in this night, which I used on the previous project part of the sale, but so is this paper. You get 48 sheets. And they're front and back. Oh, look at this one. This one's my favorite. If I can find it here, I've got some scraps here. There's a plaid in here. This one right here. I love, this is my favorite pattern in the whole pack. But the candy canes, oh my gosh, those are fun. This is pretty too. Reminds me of snowflakes. Some holly leaves and berries. There's another kind of plaid with some little, little bit of distressing on it. Pine trees. So this isn't the full pack, this is just a sampling, but there's 48 sheets total. So if you like to make multiples, um, this is a good pack to have. Okay, so like I said, um, I'll show you the dies that you can see. This smaller one was used to cut out that cherry cobbler one, and this larger one was used to cut out the Tis the Season paper. Now you could use the back too if you wanted, but I'm actually going to be using the reverse side for the pine tree that I have on this lollipop. So let's go ahead and assemble this. And because I'm putting this in my kits, I'm going to use the ornate thank stamp set because it has a million and one ways to say thank you. So, and I want to make sure that I express my appreciation. So we're gonna use so grateful. Oh, so my daughter is running her very last cross country meet today. She's a senior and I can't go to it because they're putting police at the meet so that um, parents don't come in to watch it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm a little upset about that. <laughs> but on the other hand, I've watched her run for the past six years. So fortunately, it's not coming down to this one meet, right? But I don't know. I hope she does well. So what I'm going to do to uh, make this is I'm going to layer this on top of this. So let's glue this down. And I just picked up stamp and seal. So there's a cap on it. You're going to pull the cap off and it's a tape runner. We're going to put some on the back of this. So I'm going to roll it down. Oh, still getting used to using it. There we go. And I'm going to glue it just like this. This definitely holds stronger than snail. 
I have noticed that. Now I'm going to take just a regular old office supply hole punch and I'm going to punch a hole, but I'm not going to do it in the center. I'm going to do it in the bottom third of this piece and I'm going to reach it in as far as it can go right there and I'm punching through both layers of paper. Okay. Then I am going to stamp so grateful in garden green ink. And I had a piece of white cardstock. Um, I don't know where it went, so I need to pull out another scrap here. Got lots of those. <laughs> and I, I'm going to tell you, I cut this word apart right here. This so grateful came as one stamp, but I just took my scissors and trimmed it in two. And that way it gives me more flexibility, such as what I need in this case, because I want to stamp the word so and the word grateful separately because I'm going to cut them and apply them separately on this project here. Okay. So that was Garden Green Ink using the Ornate Thanks stamp set. And now I'm going to take my paper snips and I'm going to cut them rather close. This is a great way to use up those strips. Did you ever, um, you know how you cut photo, not photo mats, you cut cardstock mats for your cards like four inches by five and a quarter inches and then you get that little strip left over? Well, this is what it's good for using, stamping little sentiments on it. Um, oh, this way down. Okay, so I'm going to use this pine tree punch to punch a tree from the same paper that I die cut the large label from. The only thing is I'm going to use the reverse side of that pattern. So I'm going to put my punch in there. This punch is returning from last year's holiday catalog and I love it. I think it's especially good with the plaid tidings designer series paper and this tis the season paper. Now I'm going to take this gold cord and I'm going to tie a bow. You like lollipops? Oh good Sharon. <laughs> I do too. They're a nice little guilt-free treat. And I like all the flavors they come in. I think grape would have to be my favorite. Although none of them taste like the fruit they're actually named after. But I think that's what I like about them. Okay, trim this cord down. What I like about this gold cord is it holds its shape nicely. So you can see when I form the bow... It doesn't flop. It stays exactly where I, I tie it. So I really like that about this cord. Now we're going to put everything together. So this look, I'm using a Jelly Belly lollipop grape. And I'm going to apply some adhesive on the back of this. Now make sure you apply a lot. You can use, actually you could use tear and tape if you have that too. That would work. Um, let me fix that. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that I apply a lot of this. I want this to stay put. I don't want it going anywhere. There we go. And I'm going to push the lollipop stick right through that hole. And if the hole punch isn't quite big enough for your lollipop, just take the hole punch and punch another hole that overlaps that one and it'll work out just fine. Okay. Now I didn't score this because I just didn't, I wanted it to have this nice rounded shape to it. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and pinch this up. So this is sticking to the front and this is going to stick to the back. And if you don't have it the way you want, just rearrange it. There we go. We got it. So that's the front. That's the back. And now we're going to glue all the pieces on. So this is going to go on with liquid glue. You know what? I have the prizes from last week, too. I forgot about that. I um, offer prizes for sharing my lives each week. You just hit the share button and then type shared in the comments so that I know you share. Because Facebook doesn't tell me otherwise. And then I draw a name to win a prize. Last week's prize was the Holiday Rhinestone Basics. This week, I'm giving away the champagne ones. They're so I've been using them on Christmas cards. And now we're going to use a mini glue dot for that. So I do have the prizes for that. Now this glue dot, I don't want it to show. So I'm just going to take my piercer and roll it up a little bit smaller. 
and then I will put this bow on just like that at the top of my tree. These would be fun to pass out for Halloween too, I think. So those are the thank yous that I'm going to be putting in my next kit. So if you're getting one of those kits, it'll be on its way to you shortly. Um, let me pull out my other treat project. Those are the two that I have for today and we will do the prizes. So last week for sharing, Marilyn Scorker won the Holiday Basics Rhinestone. So Marilyn, you have two weeks to email me or message me on Facebook your address so I can um, send your prize out to you. That's for sharing. Then the next week's prize for sharing are these champagne rhinestone basic jewels. These actually are my personal favorite embellishment in the whole annual catalog. So as a reminder, just hit the share button and then type share it in the comments and I'll enter your name into that drawing. And then if you want the project kits for today's two projects, um, I just have to order $35 in my store using this month's host code by midnight Sunday and I will get these kits cut and mailed out to you next week. So thank you guys so, so much for joining me today. I so appreciate you stamping with me. I appreciate the support. Um, and I will see you next Thursday with who knows what project. I haven't thought that far ahead, so <laughs> just have to wait and see. So, okay, guys, I had so much fun today. Thanks. Bye.